This lesson continues from the previous one where we discussed the basics of using a Firestore database. If you want to follow along with the examples, you'll need a basic view application with the Firebase SDK, as well as a Firestore database. Firebase provides us with several ways to authenticate users in our application. Users can sign up with their email address and password or use the app with anonymous sign-ins. It also leverages industry standards like OAuth and OpenID Connect, which allow users to sign up with services like GitHub, Microsoft, Facebook, etc. For our examples, we'll allow users to register with their email and password. To enable authentication, go to the Firebase console and select your project. In the menu on the left, select Build Authentication. Click on the Get Started button, then choose Email and Password for the sign-in provider. Enable the option and click Save. The next step is to set up our example in the app. Our Firebase config object is stored in Firebase slash init.js. If you need to find yours, click on the gear icon, choose Project Settings, and under the General tab, Scroll down until you find it. We've created two components to start with. The signup form component will have a form with three fields for the username, email address, and password. The login form component will have the email and password fields. For the moment, both will just log the form data to the console so that we can test if everything works correctly. The root app component will check if the user is logged in based on a data property. If the user is not logged in, it will show the login form with an option to show the signup form if the user doesn't have an account yet. You can grab the code example in the written version of this lesson, linked in the description below. If we run the example in the browser and submit some test data to the forms, it will show in the console. To register a user with an email and password, we use the create user with email and password method. The method is imported from the Firebase slash auth package and takes three arguments. The first is an auth object, the second is the email that the user wants to register with, and the third is their password. We can get or generate an auth object with the getAuth method from the Firebase slash auth package. We'll get the auth object in our init.js file. For our example, let's add a signup method and register the user with the data that comes from the form input. For now, we'll log the credentials to the console. If we run the example in the browser, and sign up with some fake user details, it will show in the console. It should be noted that Firebase automatically adds some validation for the password. It has to be six characters or longer. If we head over to the database, we can see that the user was registered and logged in. We can update certain sections of the user's profile, like the username, with the update profile method on the user object. This method is imported from Firebase slash auth and takes two arguments. The first is the user that we can get from the auth object with the current user property. The second is an object with the profile properties we want to update. To demonstrate, let's update a user's profile with the username they enter when they sign up. In Firebase, the username is stored in a property called DisplayName. We'll also add a then block and log the updated value to the console. This time, when we sign up with some dummy data, it will add the username. And if we take a look in the console, it will show the updated display name. When a new user is created, Firebase automatically updates their status as signed in. We can then redirect them to a different page with the router if we need to. Our application will use the root app component as a member area. 
If a user is logged in, it won't render the signup and login components. So, we'll emit a logged in event from the signup form component when the profile has been updated. Then, we listen for the event in the root app component on the signup form instance and change is logged in to true, which means the signup components won't be rendered. To personalize the user experience, we'll import the auth object and set a data property to the user's display name in the before update lifecycle hook. If we run the example in the browser and register a new user, it will add the user and show the welcome screen. In a project where you want to use the router, the process would be the same, except the event functionality would push the user to a different route. To log in a user with their registered email and password, we use the sign in with email and password method. The method is imported from Firebase slash auth and takes three arguments. The first is the auth object. The second is the email the user signed up with, and the third is their password. To demonstrate, let's add a login method and sign in the user with the data that comes from the form input. Then, we'll emit the same event that the signup form did. In the root app component, we'll listen for the event on the login form instance and change is logged in to true. If we run the example in the browser and log in with the credentials of one of the registered users, it will show the welcome screen. To log out a user, we use the signout method. The method is imported from Firebase slash auth and takes a single argument, which is the auth object. As an example, let's add a signout button to our root app component that references a method called logout. The logout method invokes the Firebase signout method and signs the user out. When the user is signed out, we want them to see the login component instead of the welcome screen, so we'll change as logged in to false. If we run the example in the browser and click on the button, the user is signed out and the login form component is rendered. Firebase allows us to secure our database with security rules. Security rules work on a permission system where we allow or restrict access to certain sections of the Firestore based on custom conditions. We can define these rules in two places. The first is a dedicated Firestore.rules file in the root of our project. Or, we can define them on the Firebase website under the Rules tab. Rules work with match statements that select sections of the database, like a collection. Any rules we define inside a match applies to whatever is selected. To select a collection, we specify its directory name. We can select specific documents in the collection or specify a wildcard between curly braces. The wildcard will select all documents in that collection and can be named whatever we want. Inside the match statement, we write the rules that will affect the selected section with allow expressions. The expression uses either read or write as its evaluation operators. Both can be broken into more specific operations if we need to. Read applies to any collection or document. For specific read operations, get applies to reading a document and list applies to reading a collection. Write also applies to any collection or document. For specific write operations, create applies to writing new data with set doc or add doc and update applies to updating data with update doc. Delete falls under write operations and applies to deleting data with delete doc and delete field. They can also be combined with a comma as a separator. A common pattern is to allow a user to read from and write to the database only if they're authenticated on our application. Firebase automatically gives a user a token with a unique user ID that we can access from the auth object with the UID property. If the user is not logged in, the property will be null. So, as a condition, 
we can check that the UID on the request auth object isn't null. If we want the right permission to be the same, we can combine the two. In most cases, it should be enough, but we can go a step further. Let's say we have a note-taking app, where a user should be able to write to the database, but only read their own notes. Each time a user creates a new note, a custom ID field is populated with the UID from the auth object. So, we want to evaluate if the UID matches the custom one from our resource data object. We can tell Firebase to only accept API requests coming from our own domain by locking it. To do that, we have to go to the Google Developers Console, linked below. Then, we select our Firebase project from the drop-down menu. From there, go to Credentials, and under API Keys, click on the browser key. Under Application Restrictions, choose HTTP Refers, and then click Add an Item. The documentation, linked below, describes several URL patterns to help us restrict access. The most common is to use any URL in your domain. We can also use subdomains, including www. When you're done, just click Save. Alright, that's it for the Firebase section of this series. In the next few lessons, we'll learn how to use the Composition API, as well as the new script setup. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.